Welcome back. Well, last night's Copa America final was overshadowed by the chaotic and troubling scenes in and around the stadium ahead of the match. Unticketed fans breaching security, causing chaos and a very dangerous situation for the fans packed in. The match had to be delayed for an hour and 22 minutes. Uh, just really quite disturbing scenes that we're looking at right here from Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Uh, for more, we now welcome in Felipe Cardenas, uh, who witnessed all the mayhem firsthand. And uh, Felipe, we're, we're really appreciative of your time this morning. I know yesterday must have been uh, just a, a crazy situation to witness. Can you just kind of give your initial reaction to the scenes that you saw? Oh, you know, I, I think uh, the next day, I, it's sort of hitting me, right? Like what I saw, you know, I think seeing, you know, women, children, infants, uh, pregnant women that were suffering from the heat uh, with no water that were being crushed against the gates. Uh, it was really difficult to, to witness that, to see. I think when, when we were on the ground and we were just reporting, you're doing your job. Uh, but, you know, looking back in hindsight, it was it was just a very ugly scene, you know, to see these everyone from different backgrounds, from different fan bases, everyone was struggling, whether you had a ticket or not. And I understand, like, the problem here was that, you know, hundreds of fans from both Colombia, the Colombia side and the Argentina side with no tickets were trying to get into the stadium. Uh, but my initial reaction, Susanna, was it, it just seemed like it was very naive from the organizers and the local authorities to uh, not have this this a plan in place, even though they do they did say they had a plan. I spoke to an officer who told me we have extra security, but I was there watching and I didn't see it. Uh, and what I walk away from this situation um, thinking is that, and again, this is just my opinion, is that I feel like the local authorities uh, and the stadium officials felt, told themselves, hey, there's going to be a soccer game on Sunday. We have to go manage this instead of this is a major international continental final between two massive fan bases for a trophy that means so much to these countries and to these fans. And and honestly, you don't always get the best behavior at these tournaments and at these at these fixtures as well. And so I felt like they weren't prepared for that. Uh, and that's when the chaos started, when everything sort of spilled over uh, and they just couldn't control the mass of people. Felipe, can you walk us through what your your night looked like when you got to the stadium, when you knew it was going to be this chaotic? And have you been to a match like this before or seen any type of scene, scenes like this? Because it felt like it was pretty overpowering once you see saw the group of people outside the stadium. Yeah, I mean, listen, I grew up going to games in Colombia all the time where, where police uh, on horses are, are ready to smack you if you if you misbehave and, and it can get unruly but you, you just sort of follow the protocols you get in the stadium and you, and you and you watch the game I hadn't seen anything like this in the United States you know and I've been and I was covering this tournament for four weeks I've been to plenty of uh, international term, uh, matches in the United States I was at the World Cup in Qatar you know none of the none of these things were even came close to happening uh, and you know to answer your question Charlie you know we got there my, my colleagues and I I got there almost five hours before the game. We knew it was going to be chaos, not just for the fans, but for the the reporters as well. Comable has 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 just not been able to to to, to have an organized process for anyone getting into these stadiums, uh, and, and it's just been very inconsistent. And so, you know, I've followed Argentina from, from day one, and I understood the day I took that assignment that it was it could become a bit of a problem because they are the world champions. It's like following and covering a rock band, to be honest with you. So hundreds of journalists are going to be there but Comable just they had an outdated system to get reporters into the stadium uh, and that's why we were there early now I was writing it was calm everything was going smoothly it seemed and then I started to get reports from colleagues that that fans were being trapped against the gates and we saw images of fans trying to get in so that's when we went downstairs to the main concourse uh, and, and witnessed everything from from bloodied fans to a, a, a credentialed journalist being thrown to the ground by uh, by multiple police officers uh, for no reason. I, I mean, I still don't know why. All I heard him say is that I'm a credentialed journalist. I'm here to work. And and, and that was what we witnessed. Uh, and overall, it just looked like a situation that, that got out of hand very fast. And in the end, again, what I reported last night 
on social media is that you know Comobol is, is the organization that was also responsible for the security for this tournament and and after the Uruguay Colombia you know fan violence there in North Carolina I reached out to Comobol official I asked him is there going to be more uh, additional security for the final uh, when when the events of what that happened in in Pennsylvania with with the former president when that happened I asked is there going to be extra security and my the responses were always the same security measures that we've had in place will be in place and so I think they just dropped the ball big time combable and and again this is not a FIFA tournament a FIFA organized tournament and so I think that's also a stand on FIFA though because Fans don't know this. They don't know who, what Comobol means or what's going on here. They think this is a FIFA tournament. And so that's why the World Cup in two years now uh, is sort of behind the eight balls in terms of organization and security. It's just it's just absolutely staggering, the, these scenes, and just the, the, the failure of execution on so many levels. And, and we talked about it before, Felipe. It's not like this is the first time we've seen something like this happen at a, a major event. Um, and when you... When you saw the the sort of police presence that was that was put in place, can you kind of give us a sense of like numbers? Like, were did you see were there certain sections, certain areas that had more of a police presence than than others? What did it look like? I I didn't think it was like wow, there's so many police here. No, it looked like they they the the police that were there to work the the, the event were called to the front gates because that's where the the all the fans were were beginning to pile up, and it was hundreds hundreds of fans it, i mean it was a sea of fans crushed against the gates and so they didn't want to open the gates because every time they did the crowd would push forward and try to sneak in and try to you know crush the people in front of them but i looked around and i saw police that were overwhelmed you know i saw i saw other police officers that needed that needed to be attended to medically the heat was unbearable i've been here five days it was the hottest day that i've been here in south florida uh they weren't prepared uh, again, that's that's what I saw. That's what I saw. I didn't see a police force that was ready for this, the magnitude of this type of event. Uh, now, again, like I said, I spoke to a police officer who who told me we have extra security. They're out throughout the stadium. Uh, and remember, they canceled the fan zone because they wanted to try to avoid anything like what happened. And so you couldn't even get onto what they call the Hard Rock Stadium campus without a ticket. But I, I don't I don't know if that even helped. You know, there were so many people there uh, that had a plan to get in no matter what. Uh, and there were a lot of arrests. I saw a lot of fans being arrested, being chased down, being tackled. Uh, some fans were like were showing their tickets on their phone saying, I paid two thousand dollars. Let me in. Uh, and they couldn't get in. Others were would get in and would be threatened by a police officer thinking they had snuck in it was just it was madness it was absolute chaos Oof. Felipe uh, take to us talk to us about after the game in the press got in the press zone what occurred we're talking about a major final here where players should be out there celebrating after talking to the press could you explain to us exactly what occurred between well Argentina players and Colombia players how they treated the press zone and in your opinion if that was a slight dig uh, or protest at Comlebol yeah, so these are international tournaments, so players go through what they call mix zone, right? It's it's essentially it looks like uh, there's there's small gate like gated barriers that separate you, a reporter, with the players, and they go through sort of it looks like a, an an amusement park line or or a, or a terrible airport line basically, uh, and and they stop and talk. Some some of them don't, some of them do. Uh, Colombia's players went through, you know, head down, eyes were swollen, they were pretty devastated, obviously, and a couple players stopped. I think some some did speak to rights holders before going through the mix zone, but Argentina's players uh, did not even go through the mix zone at all. And they, I, I was in the press conferences, and then by the time I got out of the press conferences, it, it was almost three in the morning, and all, the, a, a horde of reporters from around the world were still there waiting. And then suddenly someone said, "They're coming, they're coming," and we all got in position. And a mix zone is just—it's like you've got to battle your way into the best spot so you can get a so you can get a good, uh, you know, good access to the players. And suddenly someone said, "No, they're outside." And when we went outside, they were on the bus, ready with a police escort already ready to go. And so, yes, Nigel, like my opinion, it's it's one of two things. Let, let's start with what could be. Remember, when they won the World Cup, Argentina, when they went through the mix zone in Qatar, they were singing a song that was basically like, you know, screw you to the press. OK, so they so they, they don't have the best relationship historically with with the Argentine press. But right now they have a wonderful 
relationship with the media. It is unbelievable. I've witnessed it throughout the whole month. It was incredible. They, they are treated like stars. I think, and again, I, I talked to my colleague, Paul Tenorio, we were there together, and, and we sort of worked out, like, you know, maybe this was sort of a, a message from the players to Comable. You know, Alexis McAllister's mother had to be, uh, she gave an interview saying this was inhuman, what, what she was witnessing. And he had to come out of the locker room, leave his warmups to get his mother in. He was visibly affected by that. And so, I, you know, I think the players, one, were like, we're not going through that mix zone. We're not talking about what, what happened. Uh, and also, like, you know, maybe get your together combable and, and maybe we'll we'll do the deed at a final next time but the reporters seem to understand what was happening it was unfortunate but it is what it is Felipe, at any point, I mean, the match had to be delayed an hour and, and 22 minutes uh, because of all of the the chaos that was happening outside the stadium at any point did you think that this match just might be canceled entirely uh, or postponed to another day um, and was that being communicated to the the players what did what did that situation look like the the continued delays to this the start of the game I, I didn't think it was going to be canceled honestly I just felt like it would be delayed until they felt like they could kick off safely and and again remember eventually uh, they just opened the gates and everyone ran in whether you had a ticket or not and it that that uh, again that was sort of that was another moment of chaos it was a bit of, of a bit of controlled chaos uh but that's when i saw people coming in with infants there were there are children that were crying again uh fans were yelling at the organizers sort of just to themselves like how does this happen we're in the united states one one family of four from argentina said this doesn't even happen in our country man like we we, we know how, how to how to manage big football matches it's not that hard uh and and so i think you know once the game finished though you know, Nestor Lorenzo, the Colombia coach, was asked about it in, in, the, in the the press conference, and he was very blunt. He's like, "We the players are very anxious. We knew what was happening. You know, they knew they were getting messages from their family. They were getting messages from from social media. They were being asked to train or to warm up, then being brought back onto the pitch, then going back inside to the to the to the, to the locker room to, to cool off." And he had spoken. Lorenzo had spoken before the match. Uh, about Shakira's uh, concert at halftime saying like that's an issue too like you can't just let players cool down completely and then ask them to go perform at the highest level so I think every t every player I think was was anxious and, and and just trying to get the game kicked off the organizers tried to when I saw them in the, in the press box they were like business as usual nothing's happening nothing to see here uh, and finally when the game you know finally did kick off I remember at like 10 45 people were like the game this game should be over by now and we were just in like the 17th minute or something it was just wild yeah i had to go to bed i had to host the <clears> show <throat> early this morning. my kids were happy <laughs> <laughs> like i gotta go to bed uh, like, oh, we get half time this i is know the latest you've uh, honestly <laughs> just uh, entirely preventable and, and absolute chaos felipe uh we really appreciate you taking the time to to join us this morning really glad that you're safe and and thank you for all mm -hmm. your your intel on the situation